So, uh, hello, everybody. So, uh, so what I'm going to talk today uh, about is, as, as you've heard from uh, many others, it, it, is a, it, is a, it is a one part of the uh, one chapter, if you wish, of the story of, uh, of Noether's theorem and, um, and, and, and the kind of influence it has had uh, in physics. And uh, in fact, what I'm going to talk about is general relativity. Uh, and so I've been, you know, I've, you know after, a, after a brief introduction uh, about uh, what uh, Noether's theorem is about and so on, uh, you know, in my own words, uh, just for my own satisfaction. And, and, and the point here is that, uh, as has been mentioned before, and as I myself mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, general relativity was the first um, subject which kind of uh, inspired Noether uh, to write her theorem, uh, the, 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 the theorem about symmetries. And, 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 and in, in some sense, you know, like Noether theorem and general relativity had a very close and intimate relationship from then on. And as I would uh, try to emphasize and, and, and hopefully, um, you know, convince you uh, that even today, uh, these two uh, pairs of uh, very uh, interesting ideas uh, continue to yield very you know, many surprises, and, um, and 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 in their interplay, uh, you know, tells us things which are very very surprising, and uh, and and have have inspired many new fields. Okay, so so let me begin by first saying uh, about something that um, uh, a particular legacy of Noether, which uh, uh, which we have only begun to understand badly and uh, uh, nowadays, which is, uh, I mean, it is, it is I think, much more uh, clearly understood at, at, on the mathematics side of things, uh, which is this role of abstract ideas and, 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 and these general principles. Uh, so so this, is, this is one of the main differences uh, that, that Noether brought. Uh, I mean, Noether was, of course, not alone, uh, either in mathematics or, or in physics, uh, in, in bringing this, but but the point is that you know, like uh, somehow she has been uh, probably not accidentally at the at, at, at the pinnacle of of, of of when things started changing uh, in in those periods, and, uh, and 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 that is kind of surprising, uh, and and we are only beginning to understand. Part part of the problem is that uh, you know, physicists themselves have started appreciating uh, these these kind of general kind of arguments only uh, very recently, uh, roughly from. Uh, roughly since Wilson. Uh, so, so what I'm going to tell you uh, is, is, is that, you know, like, so one of the things that, uh, that, that Shubro talked about is, is this, is that even with materials and so on and so forth, where I think um, for, for a long time, the general idea was that you should not seek general principles. Um, I mean, this is, and, and, and it, is a, it is a sensible approach. I mean, uh, in the sense that, uh, or at least very far-reaching principles. In some sense, what I mean, the, what Newton and Maxwell did was uh, is that the thing that those are the rules, and uh, and maybe chemistry gives us something more. But basically, you work out its consequences. I mean, what is the point of asking for general rules and so on? But that attitude has changed with the rise of condensed matter physics. And in fact, you can say that the change in attitude is the uh, rise of condensed matter physics uh, in the in the history of physics. And, um, and 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 that has, uh, I think, uh, you know, if you if you really hunt down those ideas and the origin of those ideas, uh, it goes back to Noether, um, direct or indirectly. Directly, of course, in the ways that uh, Shubhra talked about, which is about symmetries. So so Noether's theorem. A lot of people who think about uh, you know general in, in general rules and general laws and and so on and so forth of of how why physics is the way it is, uh, resort to Noether's theorem. But, uh, but the point is that just, just this way of thinking, which leads to Noether's theorem, is also, I think, uh, 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 partly due to Noether. OK. So the basic idea is, um, is, is I mean, what is the major difference between, say, uh, how we understood Newton's laws or Maxwell's equations before Noether and how we understand it now? OK. So this is uh, Newton, Maxwell versus Noether. So what Newton, Maxwell, and so on and so forth uh, did, and, and many other people, uh, versus uh, Emi Noether, is that, 
Um, the point is that, you know, like Newton's, so Newton had to describe a, a very specific kind of systems. Uh, mainly he was inspired by solar system and, and trying to understand how the planets move, uh, how, you know, like uh, the various discoveries that were made by uh, people before him, Kepler, and so on and so forth, how did it make sense uh, out of, uh, you know, so, so he wanted to give some rules, some laws, some, some equations, uh, which, all, which we all learn in high school, uh, from which they can be calculated, okay. But, um, and, and similarly for Maxwell, you know, like there was a whole series of observations which went before Maxwell, uh, one of the major people being Faraday, uh, and, uh, and various other people you hear about in high school, Ampere and, um, and, and so on, including uh, Gauss and so on and so forth, they, that, that they had these various ideas of, uh, uh, which were drawn from experiments and they wanted to explain and they wrote down some equations. So one of the things that, that changed with Neuther, I think uh, the Neutherian revolution, as, uh, as I like to call it, uh, you know, it, it's probably a Neuther Wilsonian revolution, uh, which, is, which is that, you know, like uh, rather than asking what the laws are, uh, we, we started asking why the laws are like that. Okay. So, so, so in, in, um, in, which is, a, which is a, actually a very unusual question for a physicist to ask for, you know, I mean, people who know the history of physics knows this, you know, like one of the things that, one of the things that Newton said was that don't ask that question, right? That, that we are not here to ask why, you know, like these are the laws and, 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 and you know, I don't want to make any hypothesis. Uh, this is uh, famously, as Newton said, on, on why these laws are these ways, this is, this is the laws, right? And then we can derive things and, and I am not in the business of philosophy. Um, and, and in, a, in a certain sense, and, 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 and that, is a, that, is a, that has been a physical tradition. We do not ask why the laws are the way they are. But, but somehow, you know, like um, uh, Neuther, as Neuther's ideas and Neuther theorem has seeped into physics, okay, uh, you know, we have started asking why the laws are the way they are. Why, is, why are Maxwell's equation the way they are? Why are Newton's laws the way they are? Okay, uh, these are, not, you know, if, if you ask this question in the school, usually people just say, oh, well, they are just what you see, and this is the loss, uh, end of the story. You know, don't ask why, right? Okay, and, 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 and Noida gave a very interesting um, um, answer to this question, which, which you've heard about, which is about symmetries. Okay, that, that uh, because, um, I mean, of course, you have to start from something, and, and, and one of the things that, uh, that she said was that, you know, like, because there are symmetries, that the world we live in has certain symmetries, and those symmetries uh, decide what laws this world can have, okay? Uh, it, is, it is a kind of a flip, uh, you know, which, which happened after Neuther. Rather than, you know, like usually, usually we take a particular equation. This is what, uh, in some sense, um, Lee also did. You take a particular equation and ask, what are the symmetries of the equation, okay? But, uh, but, but I think, you know, like uh, with Neuther started this idea of, you know, having a symmetry and then asking, uh, what are the equations which are consistent with these symmetries? Where do you start with these symmetries? And, and, and then ask for, what are the equations? And, and Neuther gave a very, you know, like, um, uh, you know, the mathematicians here should, uh, you know, uh, uh, should not mind, uh, you know, but, but Neuther for a mathematician, she gave a very explicit answer to this question, very constructive, you know, very useful answer to this question, okay? Uh, not an existence answer, uh, like, you know, okay, if you have some symmetries, you'll have some equations. But, but she said that, you know, like, you, you, you basically can get these equations by, by writing down an action with these symmetries, um, which is a, actually a very, a very, very practical answer, as, as all of us know uh, who work in physics, that you know that we can write down actions with certain symmetries, and then vary it and get the equations which uh, have, uh, you know, these uh, these particular conservation laws, the equations uh, with uh, conservation laws. Okay. So this is a very, 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 you know, it kind of. Uh, it, 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 as, as a technique, it's, it's a very powerful technique because it is not, all, not at all obvious to answer this mathematical question. Uh, for example, you know, like you might ask, okay, uh, there is charge conservation in this world, electric charge is conserved in this world. How many equations can you write down? What kind of equations can you write down in which charge conservation is true? And, and, and with certain assumptions, basically Neuther argued that, you know, like, I mean, Neuther's theorem allows us to argue that, you know, basically Maxwell's equations are the are, you know, any, anything that you write down will look like Maxwell's equations, provided you assume that there are electric fields, magnetic fields, and so on. Uh, I mean, there are not many other things that you can write down with electric and magnetic fields, uh, which, would, uh, which would behave like Maxwell's equations. 
Okay, so 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 the point was that you know like, uh, and, and and that kind of gave an explanation uh, for uh, Newton's laws and Maxwell's equations. So so in particular, you know like uh, uh, you you heard about this in you know in today's uh, Samuel's talk. Uh, so so the point is that um, uh, so if you have translational symmetry, that is, uh, if, if 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 it does not matter where you are. Okay, and, and it does not matter. Often it does not matter where you are in the sense that it's, you know, the, the various laws of physics uh, are invariant under translations uh, on, on where you are. And if it does not matter of, uh, you know, where, when you are looking at the laws of physics, okay, that is the laws of physics are, are the same across time and space, okay, uh, which is, uh, if you assume these, okay, so then you get, uh, of course, Noether's theorem says that, you know, you get, uh, uh, momentum and energy conservation, respectively. Okay, and uh, but it also says that you know, like uh, in, at the level of action, in the sense that what can you write down as an action? Uh, you know, this is a this is a very uh, familiar exercise that uh, that all graduate students or not, you know, sometimes nowadays even undergraduates undergo. Okay, which is that if you take a part, if you take a particle. Uh, you know, like which has a position as a function of time, okay. And and if you impose that it should be translation invariant, and if you also impose, for example, that um, uh, if you impose the Galilean invariance, okay, which is the statement that the frames don't matter, okay. So uh, which is uh, you know, so that is inertial frame. Which inertial frame that you work does not matter. So it does not matter when you are doing something. It does not matter where you are doing your experiment, it does not matter which inertial frame you're doing this experiment. Uh, then, you, you know, so, so you want a law, you want an equation uh, which has this property, okay? Uh, so, so how do you write down such an equation? So, uh, and for, for let's say a particle, uh, you know, which, who, who, you know, whose position is a function of time, uh, then you can, you can basically see that the only thing you can write down, for example, uh, so you cannot write down any function of x because uh, x uh, is, gets translated, uh, by 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 some vector, and uh, you cannot write down you know like any arbitrary functions of time, because then you know like uh, when when you do uh, these time translations, so this is this, this spatial translation. The time translation is that it should be invariant under uh, some t going to t plus t naught, and Galilean invariance is the statement that you know it should be invariant as you take x to uh, x minus v t uh, and t go to uh, t. Okay. And, and the point is that, you know, what are the things that you can write down? Okay, so first of all, you cannot write down any function of x, okay? Um, so you can write down a function of, you can, you can take a dx by dt, so th then this means that dx by dt will go to dx by dt minus v, okay? So you cannot also write down any function of uh, dx by dt, so you have to like differentiate it again, okay? And, uh, and you should write something like d square x by dt squared equal to zero. You can do it at the level of, uh, 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 you know, and, and you like the mass, and basically is the is the Newton's law, right? So, 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 you know, like the point is that which is uh, you know Newton's law when there are no forces present, one can actually you know like put many many particles and add interactions and uh, and go through these arguments uh, uh, very carefully and uh, and and see that you know like one can get various you know one can go very far uh, by just saying that you know like so uh, that you, you need to write down some equation which is invariant under. Uh, these symmetries, okay. Uh, similarly, uh, so this is about uh, Noether's first theorem, okay. And about Noether's second theorem is that, you know, like uh, what Noether said was that, you know, if you have a, uh, uh, so if you have electromagnetism, so if people might have seen electromagnetism, and, and, um, and if you have some, and it may be in a college course, you might have seen what is the vector potential and the scalar potential. So if you have a vector potential and a scalar potential, uh, for that the electric fields and the magnetic fields are are defined uh, like this, okay. Uh, so then one of the things that one learns, uh, uh, at least um, you know, the thing is that you know, like uh, in in a in, in a college electromagnetism course, uh, in a first electromagnetism course, is that you know, like uh, this combinations are invariant under a certain set of uh, transformations, which is a vector goes to a vector uh, plus uh, grad of some lambda, and phi goes to uh, phi plus some uh, del lambda by del t, where lambda is a function of x and t. So this is the 
uh, arena of the second Noether's theorem, which is that you know, like uh, rather than having uh, things like uh, a vector and a b vector, which were some uh, some particular things which are independent of x and t, uh, here you have a function of x and t, and now you know, like uh, so. First of all, this means that you can only write down uh, uh, write down things which involve electric and magnetic fields because these are the only things which are invariant under under what are these these things are called as the gauge transformations, okay, and. And if you write down an action, okay, so you can write down an action which is uh, uh, which 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 made of this a vector and phi, okay, and and and, and of course you know to so this you have to also add relativistic invariance now, which is a which is the Einstein uh, or 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 or, or, or Lorentz uh, Poincaré and so on and so forth. So they, so they had this invariance. So also you include these translations, which is that you take x to x plus a. Uh, t to t going to t plus t naught. So these are the translations that you already had in Newton. But also you have this in additional invariance where this um, this these invariances are 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 changed. You know, are slightly modified uh, as so it was modified by Lorentz that you take uh, x to x minus v t, but with um, so so let me just take one uh, so x minus v t by square root of one minus v square by c square, and t goes to t minus vx by c square by square root of 1 minus c square by c square. So that you take c tending to infinity, uh, uh, you get back these equations. So this was the modification. Uh, and and, and, and if, if you put these things in, and if you write down the action, the most general action, uh, then you, know, you see that the most general action is, is given by dt uh, and, and integrated over dt and integrated over volume of some uh, Something which is made of uh, these two uh, guys. You know. uh, okay, so the point is that you know, like uh, the, these are the two combinations, and these two combinations should occur basically only in this way uh, to satisfy uh, this uh, relative signal variance. So this means that if you t change it this way, you can try to change how 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 the other guys change. So this is also the way that so x and t transform the same way as uh, as a and phi. Okay, and, and, and from that, you know, you can derive uh, how, how all these electric fields and magnetic fields transform. And you should write something invariant, and this is the only invariant thing that you can write down. And this already gives you the Maxwell's equation. So this, this is the Maxwell's thing. And, and you, can also write, you can also add uh, uh, some currents. So this is the charge current, okay, uh, minus rho phi. And, and the basic thing is that, you know, if you vary it, uh, the action, then what you get is, is something like, uh, the two Maxwell equations, which are uh, which are of this form. Okay, so I'm, I'm writing them in uh, some details so that it will be useful to me later on. Okay, uh, and 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 because uh, many of you might have forgotten it. Okay, um, so so what I'm what I'm saying is that you know, like uh, for these other integrals, uh, um, four integrals. Okay, and, and plus boundary terms. So what I'm saying is that if you vary this, if you change a and uh, phi, okay, so this electric fields contain within them a and phi, then you, what you can show is that uh, this is uh, uh, this is true. Okay, so uh, so so that 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 you get, and and what you get is that these two should be zero. So so the extremizing. So saying that you know the delta s is extremum is like just saying that you know like when it is maximum, you know like the first. Uh, deviation around it uh, should um, should vanish, and and that gives you uh, the Maxwell's equations. Right. Okay. So the beauty of this argument is that, of course, you know, like uh, uh, I mean, you, you seem to have just gotten something that was done, um, you know, 50 years or 60 years before Noether. Uh, or you know, like uh, or, or things which were done many centuries after Noether, many centuries before uh, Noether came in. So how does this help? That what how it helps is that you know, like if you want to think that there is some modification, okay. For example, sometimes there is a modification because there is a medium or, or something. You know, like you can you can actually ask what are the symmetries in the problem, and you can actually add corrections uh, to this uh, to this and, and and ask how the Maxwell's equation get modified. So so the point is that you know like Noether's theorem does not only tell you that Maxwell's equation why Maxwell's equations are true, okay. But if Maxwell's equations are not true, okay, what are the allowed corrections? 
Okay, and uh, and, and and that is the, uh, that is the power of of the symmetries. So one of the things that you find here is is something that people have been uh, telling a lot about uh, in the last two days, and and, and something which will uh, be very uh, important for me too uh, in general relativity. Uh, so so what you find here is that you know you get two equations. So these are equations probably you have seen. So this is the this is what is called as a modified Ampere's law, and this is the Gauss's law, and these two equations. Are, are, are saying something very interesting, okay? So, so let me just take the Gauss's law for a moment, okay? So the Gauss's law says that, that this is true. So this is the charge density, okay? This is the charge current, uh, and this is the charge density, okay? So there are various very, very interesting things about Maxwell's equations which come this way, which, which Noether pointed out, okay? So, so the first thing is that this seems to be saying that, so this is the, this I said was the electric charge, right, of, of the matter. So let's say, you know, you take a, you take some charged uh, matter, then, you know, like you have some electric charge. And what it seems to be saying is that, you know, like this electric charge plus some correction, so this is a, elect, this is a, elect, is a electromagnetic field correction to this uh, electric charge, if you, you know, one way of thinking about it. So this is the, this is actually the noise charge, okay, uh, of associated with, um, associated with these gauge transformations, which I wrote down somewhere, yeah, here, okay. And, uh, and, and the point is that, you know, like this is actually the noise charge, and, and what it does is that you take an electric charge, and there's a, some, somehow, so this electric charge that the matter has, and the electric field reacts uh, when it sees that electric charge, by producing a term, okay, which cancels that electric charge, okay, so that the net Noether charge is actually zero, okay, and that is the content of the Gauss's uh, law, okay. So, so somehow the electric field, so so this is this is the way Noether asks us to think about something that we have all thought about in uh, in um, uh, in high school, uh, that 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 you know that that somehow we should think of uh, this Gauss's law as saying that you have electric charge, and then there is something in the electric field, the electric field tries to arrange itself so that it cancels, uh, it gives a cancelling contribution uh, to the electric charge and, and so that the net Noether charge is zero, okay? Um, so you can, you can actually uh, use the Noether's formulae to show that this is the, this is the third charge and this is actually, uh, uh, you know, is also, you know, people who know quantum mechanics uh, know that this is actually how, you know, if you are doing a Hamiltonian way of thinking about electromagnetism, uh, this is how you, in, you know, you impose these gauge invariants. Okay. That is invariance under the symmetries. Okay. So, that by imposing this Gauss's law, okay, somehow this rho gives you rise to transformations of the matter, and this divergency gives rise to transformations of the, of this A and phi, and somehow all these transformations should cancel. That is the symmetry. That, that somehow the system the, and the state should not be should not change uh, when you when you do these uh, gauge transformations. Okay, and, and 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 that is the content of this. And, and there's a similar statement here. Okay, so there's electric current. Okay, and the electromagnetic field also wants to cancel the electric current. Okay, and and and, and the way it cancels is is by giving this contribution. Okay, uh, so this is also so this is rho noether really. Uh, you should integrate it over some volume to get and 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 the noether current. Uh, is also given by uh, this J and this cancelling contribution, uh, which is curl B by mu naught uh, plus uh, epsilon naught uh, del E by del T. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the content of the noise that this is also zero, right? Okay. Uh, when the equations are obeyed, and and that is and that is the somehow uh, how we should think about electromagnetism. That electromagnetism has these fields. Okay, which, uh, uh, which whose, whose job uh, is to react to the charge in a way that they cancel the, 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 the electric and the magnetic charge. This is a slightly uh, unusual way of thinking about it, but this is exactly how uh, it, this happens to be the, the correct and, 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 and a very useful way to uh, think about these things. Okay, so this is, this is, the, this is the basic um, uh, idea, and there are, there are various, uh, various, various other things that you can say about it. Okay, uh, so, so the, the, this generator of these gauge transformations, so these are also, you know, as uh, Mukunda uh, talked about yesterday, if you think about in the, in the phase space, uh, these guys are also the generator of these transformations, especially this one uh, in the Hamiltonian formalism. This is the generator of the gauge transformation, and, and that it vanishes uh, is, the, is basically the Gauss's law. Okay, 
Another very interesting uh, statement is that, so we know that electric and magnetic charges are, uh, sorry, electric charges are, uh, are conserved by themselves. Uh, and, and that actually comes out of these equations. Uh, so this, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a standard exercise in, um, uh, in, in electromagnetism that if you calculate del rho by del t plus divergence j, okay, uh, then that also amounts to zero. Okay. So the point is that, you know, like, um, so, so, so there's a part of the electric part, and then the point is that the magnetic, this, because this other part okay, uh, also gives you zero by itself. Okay, so that's the point. The point is that you know you can take a del by del t of this and divergence of this, okay, uh, and you will see that this extra part, the, ele the contributions that are given by the electric and the magnetic uh, contributions to these charges uh, themselves vanish separately, okay, and, um, and 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 hence you know like you get a separation, a separate conservation of uh, of this guy, okay, and that partly comes from the fact that you know like these. So so I have written down two sets of terms. Uh, these set of terms itself are invariant under uh, these gauge transformations, okay? And, and Noether's second theorem says that, you know, uh, Noether's first theorem, uh, you know, also says that, that basically because they're invariant under these transformations, you can, uh, you can take the del T of this and divergence of that and you'll get zero, okay? So this is a very interesting statement, but one of the things that I wanted to say, because I want to talk about gravity and, and, and so on, uh, is that, you know, like, um, uh, this is, this, this Maxwell's equations, the Maxwell's equations have been, there for uh, many years, and, and they have, uh, you know, they're, they're very deep, and uh, though, though we all read it, them in uh, high school, and so on and so forth, and, and we don't quite always appreciate, and, and our, our first years of colleges, and we don't always appreciate, uh, I think, uh, the, the, the depth of Maxwell's equations, only when, as you grow as a physicist, uh, you, you, you learn more of, more of it. Okay, so, so another thing is that, you know, like, um, there's a kind of, um, a kind of a holography, uh, within these equations, okay? Uh, so this is something that we all know that, uh, uh, that let's say, you know, like you have some bunch of charges, okay? Uh, this is some electric charge, okay? And, and let us say you consider uh, our electric current, and let's say you are far away, okay? Uh, so that there's no charge going inside or not, and there's, there's a way of saying it, which is that this J, okay, uh, if, if this is a normal vector, uh, then, you know, like, uh, uh, there is no current which is going out okay. at, at, at any, any point, let's say, okay. Uh, so if there's no charge which is going out, okay, then, you know, you, you, can, you can use these equations, okay, uh, to, to, I mean, first of all, there, there's something that we all learn, that there's a way to measure this electric charge by, by doing, a, doing something at, at very far, okay. And the, and, the, and the thing that you do it is to look at electric flux, is to use this equation. You know, you look at the total electric flux which comes out of this region, okay, and, and, and the total electric flux, uh, uh, as we learn, uh, is actually given by uh, the total charge enclosed uh, with an epsilon naught, right, okay. And, and, and this is the Gauss's law, okay. So that, you know, you can actually uh, figure out what the, what the total electric flux is, so this DA actually can be written as this. Uh, DA. Okay. So there's something that you can integrate on the on the surface on the boundary. So this is the, this is the volume, okay, and this is the boundary, okay, and there's some thing which you can integrate on the boundary, which is same as integrating uh, the row in the inside this thing. So the Q enclosed is actually just uh, uh, integrating this row, this charge density over the volume, and hence you know like some of the volume integrals uh, because of Maxwell's equations. Uh, can be converted into surface integrals of integrating something over the surface, okay? And in fact, one can go further, so that is, that is the content of this, and, and this guy, we can, we can use this fact that n dot j is not, is equal to zero, and you can actually rewrite this equation. So you can write, uh, so by, by, by taking uh, uh, n dot j, okay, so you can, you can do a, uh, you can dot the whole thing with the normal vector of the, this, this Ampere's law, and when you dot the whole thing with the uh, normal vector, uh, what you get, what you find is that, uh, uh, and then you do some vector algebra, okay, what you find is something like this. Um, okay. So this is the normal part of, of, uh, of this uh, Ampere's law, okay, and, and we, we, if, you know, if I apply it here, okay, so I get this equal to zero, and what this seems to tell me is that, you know, like if you see uh, this equation, 
is actually very similar to this equation. Okay, so it also is a, is a, is a particular uh, conservation equation. So in, the, in in some sense, you can uh, define a J of the boundary theory. Okay, uh, as n cross b by mu naught and and rho of the boundary theory. So you can define a you can imagine because there are no charges here. So this is not the usual electric charge. Okay, but you can imagine that there's some other charge. Okay. Uh, which is which is conserved, okay? Which obeys these uh, equations, okay? Uh, which are such that the J boundary and, and and low boundary are this. And the beauty of the Noether theorem, as I said, was that you know there will always be an, the expression will always be like this, okay? That you know you can add any other corrections, you can take this whole thing and square it, okay? Uh, that is also an allowed addition to the action because if this is invariant under the symmetries, its square is also invariant under the symmetries, and that will modify the Maxwell's equations. Okay, that will change the Maxwell's equations. You change this equation, but you will always get some charge density minus something, which is the which is the way the electric field and magnetic fields correct the charge density. They cancel the charge density as neither as as it to, and, um, and 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 cancels the current as it asks it to, and and you can always do this exercise where you know you, you leave the charges go far away, and take whatever you get here, okay, and and you will you can you you will see that you know this is this is part of you know uh, one of the results of Noether that that you know you can always write it in this way, so so this itself is a very interesting statement and probably a very peculiar statement uh, if you're not this thing, but but this also already tells us if you have a gauge theory if your gauge are symmetry. So here you have a gauge symmetry, okay. So and and you know the second theorem, okay, which is basically these uh, statements, okay. Um, and on the boundary, you seem to so these guys uh, seem to obey know this first theorem, okay. So this kind of uh, seems to imply that in some sense, you know, you can think of uh, you can think of this theory, the in, which is inside. As, as some, you know, which has this gauge symmetry, uh, as being s same as some theory which is living on the boundary, okay, which has this uh, as uh, as its noether uh, charges, uncancelled noether charges because these are non-zero, okay, uh, these are non-zero noether charges, uh, and, and and somehow so, so and, and and somehow the boundary theory with some global symmetries and the bulk theory with some gauge symmetries are, are somehow equivalent. So this is this is the uh, one of the things that you notice that gauge symmetries. Uh, in the bulk, are uh, are, sim are very closely related to uh, global symmetries uh, in the boundary. Okay, which is something that you already see at the level of uh, uh, Maxwell's equations, and this uh, is about uh, Noether's second theorem, and and this is about uh, Noether's first theorem. Okay, now of course this is not this is uh, some picturesque thing. You know, it's not entirely true that. Uh, that, uh, that that these theories are very equivalent. If you if you try to do any any further calculations, this doesn't hold. Uh, one of the one of the major reasons that uh, this is not completely right. Okay, uh, but the reason I'm telling you is that you know it can be improved. But this is not completely right. Is that there are other noether charges which are zero, which are non-zero inside. Okay, uh, but there are other noether charges, in, in particular energy and momentum. Okay, uh, which are the noether charges of uh, of translations and, uh, and 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 rotations and, and Lorentz transformations and so on. There's Galilean invariance um, and okay, I should have added rotation. It also includes rotations uh, 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 that that and, and so on, which kind of um, are independent of they're independent of x and t, and and hence they have noether charges uh, which are non-zero, which means you're not cancelled all the noether charges. You have just cancelled the electric noether charges. Okay. Uh, so, so which means that there are other noether charges which are non-zero, and then you know you cannot reproduce uh, that by doing anything in the boundary. Okay, so so the theory is not completely empty, or you know it has local degrees of freedom uh, inside the bulk, okay, which carry energy, momentum, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so because of that, uh, you know, like this analogy is not completely perfect. Okay, but one can make this analogy perfect. Okay, and and there's a, there's a very you know simple way to make this analogy perfect, which is basically to take uh, these symmetries of translations, rotations, um, Lorentz transformations, uh, these guys, and so on, and, and make you know this a vector, t naught, this v, and all, all of them functions of x and t. Okay, that is you know like gauge uh, the the translations and and, and so on. okay, so gauge translations, etc. Okay, 
So I will not have a, a lot of time, I know, because uh, to, to, and, and maybe it may not even be very useful uh, to, to, to say that, but the point is that, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, to explain in detail what this leads to and how it leads to, uh, but, but the point is that, you know, like, uh, uh, the derivations are very similar, and if you, if you try to go through these derivations, uh, what you get is, is a general relativity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is one of the things that uh, that we had discussed in the morning. That you know, like if you have a gauge transformation, that it really matters whether the gauge transformation dies off at infinity or not. Okay. Uh, so gauge transformation which dies off information infinity, infinity is a true gauge transformation. You know, then you have to identify the states. But usually, gauge transformation which doesn't die off at infinity, you should really think of it as a global symmetry, and not of the and in some sense it's not like the global symmetry of the bulk theory, but it's a global symmetry of of some other theory which is almost living in the boundary. Okay, uh, so, 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 uh, so the gauge transformations, uh, yeah, so that is the case. That is a, of course, you know, in, in practice, it depends on what boundary conditions you put, how far they die off, and so on and so forth, but, but that is the short answer to the question, that if the gauge transformations die off fast enough, okay, then, you know, they are gauge transformations, okay, but there are gauge transformations which do not die off, uh, uh, and, and, and those are the things which lead to uh, equations like this, okay, and, uh, and, and some effective, uh, currents, know the currents on the boundary theory, okay, which, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, so the point is that, you know, if you gauge translations and rotations and Lorentz transformations, uh, what you get is general relativity, and, um, and, 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 and this, is the, this, is the, this is the first arena, I mean, you know, of course, historically, um, and Neuder uh, came, you know, during this period in 1915, and, and one of the things that people were interested in, uh, uh, Einstein was, for example, interested in this question, uh, you know, because of because it took him a really long time to try to answer this question that what equations, okay, give uh, energy momentum conservation, okay. So in the sense that in the, in the same way that uh, that uh, that Maxwell's equations automatically give charge conservation, okay. Uh, so so that you have you can write it in this way, okay. Of course, we now say you can write it as no the charge equal to zero. And, and then, you know, you can look at this and, and get these and so on and so forth. But this was not known to Einstein. Uh, so he was, he was trying, to, uh, so, uh, trying to see what equations give uh, energy momentum conservation. And Hilbert uh, was also asking a similar question, but he was asking about action, uh, 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 no. which, is a, which is the difference uh, that, that he was asking what kind of action. So he was asking what kind of how can you write down something like this, okay? So that you can get something like this and something like this. Basically, repeat uh, what I have written, okay, in gravity. Uh, of course, you know, gravity is more complicated and, and more unfamiliar. It's not uh, something that we see uh, in, uh, in high school or in first year college. Uh, so, but the point is that the, 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 the conceptually, the point is very similar. And this is what they were interested in, and they were asking. And, and Noida being Noida, uh, she's, uh, she's always been somebody who, who takes a question uh, which somebody is asking and, and answers it in such generality that you know for generations that uh, that people uh, are grateful for her. Uh, so the point is that you know like so 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 Neuther answered this question, okay, uh, by saying that, and this is Neuther's answer to this question uh, that uh, that what you have to do is just gauge translations, okay, uh, and, and and if you do that if you repeat this. Uh, if you put some symmetries, write down the action which is invariant under the symmetries, then you know, like every step of this, you know, the shows holds. Okay, even in the in the case of gravity, even when you gauge translations. Okay, so for example, uh, the analog of these guys, okay, are, are what I call the Einstein equations. So you get, um, so this is a, this is this TAB is is, is is a way to is a standard way to denote the energy momentum. Okay, and then you say it gets cancelled, the energy momentum of the matter gets cancelled by a contribution from, from the background metric. So there's a metric which cancels this energy momentum, okay, uh, which basically has some form like, uh, for, for mathematicians here who know some differential geometry, 
Okay. Um, okay. So, so something like this. That uh, that. So so this is. I mean, or, or, you know, all that you have to know is that it is made of uh, some particular field, like electric field. There is a metric field. There is some field which uh, which which is ready to cancel, which is ready to rush in whenever there is an energy momentum somewhere. Okay, and cancel the energy momentum for that as 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 Noether insists, because when you do a gauge transformation, this should be equal to zero. Okay, so this is the energy momentum, and the energy momentum should be cancelled because in a, in, a, in, a, in a local theory there should not be any energy momentum at anywhere, and and, and it, so this is the energy momentum density and current, okay, and uh, and, and and that is cancelled by this thing. Newton is the Newton's constant, and and so on and so forth. And, and the point is that uh, uh, the point is to write this form, okay, like like you write uh, this particular form and this particular form, okay. Uh, and, and, and that form is given by uh, given by the, the theorem, and, and, and the point is that it, it is this particular form which works. Uh, for example, you know, as, as Einstein for a lot of time, uh, tr you know, tried various terms in this. You know, at some point of time he tried only R. Some point of time he tried only R A B or various things. You know, uh, and the point is that you know, like if you, for example, drop this term, it does not work. Okay, uh, because you know, neither says that there is a very specific term which occurs here, which cancels the charge density. Uh, but but the point is that you know like uh, so then you can ask okay so we have got an equations like this uh, now you can take a del by delta of this divergence of that and you get this uh, so what do you get when you uh, when you try to uh, uh, try to do this when you try to take this kind of equation so uh, of course what no just said was not just this you know so this is a particular thing plus corrections you know you can add any correction okay and everything that uh, uh, that that no just theorem says will still hold. Uh, various things that I'm saying is still hold. The point is that you know, like this means that you can get an equation, okay, which is like uh, uh, grad A T A B uh, is equal to zero, okay, where grad A involves some metric. So this is some uh, some generalized derivative, okay, uh, which 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 means that you know, so you can write down um, some some particular thing which looks like that, okay. Now here, you see that you know, it did not involve any gauge field, okay. Uh, no a vector phi in this contribution. Uh, one of the things which confused the hell out of people was that you know, like uh, that was not the case here. Okay, it, it confused also Einstein and various things. But but no, either showed that this is what follows. You know, you can write down the most general thing. You look 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 at the corrections, and and this is what follows. That uh, the TAB that you put that you cancelled. Okay. Uh, it should be should satisfy some conservation equation, some modified conservation equation, but with some g in it, and and this is a is a is a is a, is a, a very interesting statement because it says that it is you know electromagnetism and gravity are alike in some ways, but they're not alike in other ways, and in fact you can you can you can you can kind of try to ask why is this true. Okay. In fact, it's not very difficult from noise analysis to ask why is, is this different from that equation? There, there was no uh, the additional fields that you added to cancel uh, did not um, appear at all, and here they appear. And, and the reason has to do with uh, actually the fact that that uh, uh, there are there are various ways of saying it. Let me say two two ways of saying it. One way of saying it, which uh, which maybe people from relativity might frown upon, uh, is that you know that that gravity itself. Creates energy and momentum. There's a gravitational force. Okay, uh, that that gravity, you know, in, in a way that electric and magnetic fields do not create charges. Okay, but gravity can create momentum and uh, and energy. Okay, uh, because the gravity has a force. Because that's what a force is. A force is something that uh, that uh, that starts with an object without a momentum. Okay, and 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 you know, and, and gives it a momentum. Okay, so the, so so that's the first that's the, the physical difference. Okay, that the gravity itself carries energy and momentum in some sense. Okay, okay, that's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it at the level of symmetries is that uh, is that unlike these transformations which commute with each other, if you do a, if you do one transformation and if you do another transformation, uh, it does not matter the order in which the transformations matter. This group, the group of, of these transformations. Is, uh, is is made of commuting elements, okay? In the sense that if if you think of this transformation as some uh, some g lambda, okay, you apply g lambda and g lambda prime, uh, which is same as applying g lambda prime and g lambda, but the uh, but but the transformations which gravity gauges are not uh, commuting. So g lambda g lambda prime 
which is not equal to g lambda prime g lambda. Uh, this already we know at the level of rotations, this, which is one of the part of the symmetries that gravity gauges. Okay, and and and, and the point is that you know like uh, yeah. So, so so because one rotation and another rotation does not commute, this is a, this is a basic geometrical fact. And, and that geometrical fact means that this sequence is also very important, okay? Because, you know, like a lot of times uh, when people, uh, for example, first time they learn cosmology, they get very confused, okay? Because people say that, uh, um, that vacuum has an energy density, okay, which, is, uh, which we know uh, the, uh, since 1998, uh, since people measured that the vacuum has an energy density and a negative pressure, uh, which is called as a cosmological constant or dark energy, okay? Um, uh, so, so, so okay. So people say okay, fine. So physicists tell us that, uh, that there's some energy density in the vacuum, uh, and then you know they also tell us that the vacuum keeps on expanding, that the space keeps on creating, created, and and, and that sounds like uh, somehow the energy keeps on getting created, okay. And um, and how does that happen? Where does that energy come from? If energy conservation is really true, and and, and that is that it goes back to this. Uh, this, this basic uh, observation that, that in gravity, you know, the conservation laws are slightly more subtle, okay, and, 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 and in, in some sense the metric is, uh, metric can itself have some momentum or, or energy, and, 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 um, and, and that is, you know, that, and that this is true, okay. In fact, when, when people uh, realize that this is true, there were a lot of attempts to try to get rid of it, to try to see whether, you know, to somehow remove this g-dependence. Okay, that is that is one of the things that uh, Einstein and so on tried to do for many many years, and one of the things Noether said was no way. The one you know a, you know the only way to make this thing g independent is to make sure that one rotation and another rotation commute. Okay, because symmetries this 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 is a consequence of the symmetry by Noether's theorem. Okay, and unless you know like you're you're suddenly going to transform you know transport yourself into a world where one rotation and another rotation commute and the order of the rotation don't matter, uh, you know, you have to live with this, okay? So this, this is an inevitable consequence of very basic geometrical fact and of the symmetries, okay? And, and it is very clear that, you know, like, you're not going to go anywhere into the world where one rotation commutes with another, so you better learn to live with it, okay? Uh, this, is the, this is the basic thing. Of course, you know, like, what you can do is that, you know, you can do uh, something very similar uh, to what I did in the case of uh, electromagnetism, okay? Again, I'm not giving you details. But 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 uh, but it's very similar. Okay. So what you have to do is that you know you have to take some normal component. So what you have to consider is that you have to consider some some energy momentum or mass uh, and so on. Okay. And then you go for you you make a sphere which is far away. Okay. Um, and then you have these equations, right? And then you 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 know you take this energy momentum current and contract it with a normal vector. So again you have a normal. Okay, um, which is n hat. Okay, and you can contract it. You know, so so this is uh, done by uh, writing it this way, and then and then you get some uh, some some divergence. And guy, you can again interpret it. This is uh, usually what is called as a, a Brownian tensor. Okay, so for people who are in differential geometry, you can use. Uh, gauss kodashi relations and so on and so forth to, to, to write it this way, but it doesn't matter. The point is that there's some mathematical jugglery, like, uh, like the vector algebra I used to write this part, okay, uh, to write something here. Uh, so which, which does, you know, so which, which seems to say that there is a non-zero energy momentum, an uncancelled energy momentum. So here there was an energy momentum which, uh, which the gravity rushed, uh, the metric rushed to cancel always. But on the boundary, there is an uncancelled energy momentum, uh, and 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 and, uh, and, and there's a there's a boundary theory. And now you know, like we can hope that you know, for once this is done, if let's say if you do not have any global noether charge, you know, in the bulk, okay, there's no global noether charge which is conserved, which is which is non-zero. So all the noether charges are cancelled, okay. So let's say that the electric charge is cancelled by the electric fields. If it is an energy momentum, it is cancelled by gravity, okay. Uh, then you have a, a, a gravitational theory, okay, and then you can really ask, can you, can you make this analogy precise, okay, can you make it such that, you know, can you really write it down as, uh, you know, so, so you have in the bulk, uh, uh, again, a second um, Noether's theorem, okay, and, uh, and in, the, in the boundary, you have the first Noether's theorem, okay, uh, 
And, and can you really make a theory? Can you write on a theory such that, you know, like if you have gravity gauge theory and so on and so forth, in the bulk, can you really write on a theory in the boundary such that these analogies which come out of uh, Max's equations and Einstein's equations uh, holds you know, in, a, in a very specific way, and we understand it as a, as a, as a theory in the boundary uh, which obeys the Noether's uh, first theorem. Okay. And, and this, you know, like uh, uh, through, through various twists and turns of history, uh, you know, and, and the century of uh, various other things, okay, is what led to the notion of holography, okay, uh, in, the, in the theories of gravity. Okay, there's a, so, so let me just mention uh, before moving there, move there let, me, let me just mention one more fact that you know like uh, this, so, so, so this kind of, this, this idea that, that uh, in a gravitational theory, everything is canceled, all the noise charges are canceled, you know, the electric charge is canceled, the energy momentum is canceled. So really what is there? You know, like if, 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 there, is a, if there is a matter, if there is something uh, which has like no conserved charge, you know, there's no, nothing to count it. Okay, in some sense, you know, like it's it's a, it's, it's a perfectly empty theory, uh, in a in a in a in a way of speaking. Okay, so a gravitational theory is a perfectly empty theory. Okay, which which somehow has degrees of freedom. Okay, which uh, and and, and noise charges which come only from uh, from what is happening in the boundary, and um, and, and 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 that uh, another way of seeing it is uh, is is uh, is in the case of black holes. Okay, so these black holes are Solutions to these equations, uh, you can you can take these equations and, and write down the solutions to these equations. So, uh, so there are particular solutions to these equations, such that you know. Uh, so this is probably many of you would have heard about black holes, uh, especially they were lately in use uh, because of the black hole uh, colliding each other and producing gravitational waves and so on and so forth. So black holes are basically objects uh, where you basically fall in and you cannot escape. This is the general definition of black hole, which will suffice for the purposes. And, and one of the things that um, uh, that has happened, so I was uh, has is, is, to, is that is, you know you can calculate the mass and the charge associated with the black hole. Okay, mass, charge, angular momentum, and so on and so forth. Okay, by basically using something akin to Gauss's law, as I said, you know you can go far away. Okay, and integrate out the electric field, and and, and actually measure the total charge inside. Okay. Similarly, for a black hole or, or any, any for any 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 configuration really any gravitational configuration, you you know the matter is not spreading everywhere. You can go far away and and, and, and cover it with a sphere, and you can use this kind of uh, uh, things. You know, so there's there's something that you can integrate, and and you know this you can integrate the Brownian tensor. Okay, like you know you can. So this charge density that you can integrate here is really what we call the electric charge density. That's what uh, Gauss's law says is a charge enclosed. And, and, and the point is that you know you can do that, and you can get the energy momentum which is enclosed, okay, uh, inside uh, this this big ball. And, and when, when people started calculating these things, one, they 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 observed some very interesting thing. That first of all, of course, these are all these are all Boas uh, uh, area, okay, of uh, where where you calculate, okay, roughly. But but the point is that you know like. Uh, uh, so okay, so so this is integrated over area. So there's something which uh, some some effective energy momentum density which you integrate over the area to get the uh, total energy momentum and, and and charge. And what they noticed was that this obey um, some therm thermodynamic like relations. Okay, so this is a uh, which means that you know like uh, so thermodynamic relations are if you remember your uh, again your high school or first year college. Okay, so there are relations like uh, this, uh, first law. Okay, uh, so there is a change in energy, uh, and, and then there's a change in uh, minus PdV or something. Okay, so, so, so there's a change in entropy, there's a change in number density, and this is a very uh, long uh, discussion of, of what the thermodynamic relations are. So there are there is thermodynamic relations, and, and the energy that you calculate here, which is the mass, uh, uh, energy is same as the mass, up to c square, which is set to one, and charge, which is basically the number, uh, total number, and an angular momentum, uh, which I, which let me ignore for a moment. Okay, but the point is that you know, like there is there are relations like this which are satisfied by the black holes. So in in, in a sense, you know, like uh, so somehow when you calculate the noise the charges of of these black hole solutions, okay, uh, you see this thing, you know, see that you know it, it it looks as if you are measuring the 
uh, noise charges of some uh, thermodynamic system, which is really weird, okay? Uh, because, you know, like we started with an action, uh, we have a solution, we have an equation which obeyed noise theorem, because usually what people will tell you, the noise theorem does not apply to things like thermodynamics, uh, where there are dissipation, and so on and so forth. But, but for the first time, okay, uh, you know, Bekenstein and Hawking realized that, uh, that these noise charges that you calculate here, okay, uh, naturally give you thermodynamics, okay? Uh, which was also, um, which was later, you know, like studied by Wald, and 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 and, and Wald actually you know, like studied this carefully. So this is this actually, you know, like you can so in some sense, um, the boundary theory that I've talked about, okay, what this says is that the that the boundary theory obeys thermodynamics, okay, okay. So 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 this is a, this is the next, you know, like evidence, next shot in the dark. Okay, which says that this idea that uh, that somehow gravity, if, if you if you send all the noise charges to zero, if you are studying a system with all noise charges to zero, uh, somehow that there is a boundary description of that is not completely crazy because boundary theory obeys thermodynamics, which means uh, it's a it's, it's it's a sensible theory. Of course, you know to make it obey thermodynamics in a, in a very proper way, uh, because in the usual black holes and so on, it has some negative specific heat and so on. What you have to do is like you have to choose the uh, this lambda to be negative, uh, but, but those are all technical details uh, which are important, but, uh, but I don't have time to talk about them. But the point is that you know, that, you, know you have to put some uh, cutoff and, 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 and do it properly, but the point is that you know, like, uh, the boundary theory does obey thermodynamics if you, if you do it in an in, in appropriate setting. And, and the, you know, it is these kind of um, ideas which came together, okay, and, um, and, and, and which led to, you know, you know in, in, in string theory, uh, which uh, I mean, so this is the only time I'm invoking string theory, uh, right at the end of the talk, okay, uh, uh, which is, which is uh, how it is. But the point is that, you know, like, it is, it's this kind of ideas which are, which, are, which are made more precise in string theory, uh, that in 1998, Yuan uh, 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 Maldesena, okay, uh, actually found an example, okay, uh, in, within string theory where, uh, where, you know, like the, the noise charges inside are zero, Okay, so it's a gravitational theory. Okay, so so you have a gravity inside. Okay. Okay, and uh, and, and noise charges are zero. Okay, and 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 argued that there is a completely um, boundary description of this. Okay, and, and and a boundary theory. Okay, which is a which is a theory which is not very much unlike electromagnetism. It's a gauge theory. Okay, but not uh, gravity. You know, gauge theory in which uh, translations are not gauged, uh, but some other symmetries are gauged. Um, so these have non-zero energy and momentum, uncancelled energy and momentum charges. Okay, and what uh, Maldesen showed was that you know, like uh, in, in in particular examples, you can actually write this gravity theory as a, as a gauge theory, and which also explains. Um, how this works, and for example, this entropy, another statement I forgot to say, a uh, very important statement is that this entropy, when you calculate, uh, you see that the entropy goes like the area of this, uh, uh, you know, of the boundary, uh, or area of the horizon, really. It goes like an area, area of this, uh, uh, this is RH, and then it goes like RH square. Okay, up to some factors of uh, one over G Newton and so on. Uh, and that also tells you that somehow the number of degrees of freedom which contributes to the entropy uh, is, 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 is not there. You know, there's no, I mean, this is this idea that the noise charge is zero inside, means that there's no degree of freedom inside. If you count the entropy, it, you also get a zero answer for the volume piece. Because generally, if you, if you, if you try to calculate the entropy of something, let's say, of the gas, uh, just in this thing ignoring gravity, uh, what you will see is that you know like uh, that, that that there's an entropy which goes like the volume of the room, okay. But there's no such piece, okay. And and that is because um, all the other noise charges are also cancelled, and and what they what they discovered is the entropy also gets cancelled. So, so so somehow somehow. Uh, uh, so there are very weird things which are happening here, which are not quite well understood even today. Okay, uh, so 100 years after Noether's theorem, that somehow the Noether's theorem here, you know, in this case, seems to be telling us that, of course, this also, uh, you know, uh, an active area of research, is, is telling us that somehow not just the, the usual Noether charges are cancelled, okay, but somehow the entropy is also cancelled by gravity. Somehow the, you know, when, when the energy is cancelled, momentum is cancelled, charges are cancelled, okay, uh, then thermodynamics, if, if, and if thermodynamics has to hold, 
Okay, where all these things are cancelled. Okay, uh, then you know it better be the entropy also is cancelled by gravity. Some of the bulk entropy is also cancelled by gravity, uh, and, and it only leaves the area piece, and and you get this answer. Uh, which is very weird, first of all, that, that, that the entropy uh, has anything to do with neither formalism. Itself is weird because it's a dissipative system and, and so on. And um, uh, so a so few, few more minutes. Okay. So, and, and, uh, but, but the point is that, you know, like, uh, uh, so somehow the entropy is related to the neither formalism. Somehow it's not correct to think that things to do with thermodynamics are are outside the purview of Noether's formalism. Dissipative systems are outside the purview of Noether's formalism. And somehow entropy is also a Noether charge. And that is, uh, is the, so, 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 so Wald, uh, uh, in, in a paper in 1995, okay, tried to put together these ideas and ask, how is this consistent with the Noether formalism? And, and he used the Noether formalism to basically realize that all this is consistent, okay, okay, if, so this is the this is a, a an essential insight due to Wald, uh, uh, 95 I think, okay 1995, okay that uh, that that uh, that all this is consistent if entropy somehow you can also think of it as a noise charge of some symmetry, okay, okay, and. Uh, it's not clear whether the symmetry is a symmetry of first kind or symmetry of second kind or something. We don't quite understand. In fact, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very confusing thing and, and has spent the last few years trying to understand whether it's a symmetry of the first kind or second kind. So, so, so very simple thing we don't understand. But, but uh, Wald suggests that you know, entropy is a noise charge of some symmetry. Uh, and, and, and this also suggests that you know, it's probably a gauge symmetry. Okay. Uh, it's not clear what this gauge symmetry is. Okay, we do not know what the gauge symmetry is. Something which makes sure that the entropy gets cancelled, like electric charge, like energy momentum. Okay, and we do not know. We do not see any other gauge field which cancels. Somehow the gravity itself does the job. We do not know how. Okay, and uh, and hence you know this 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 very uh, old conundrum of uh, of why the charges are getting cancelled and so on and so forth was solved by Noether for energy momentum. Uh, um, but but they continue to uh, uh, come to us even today in, in, in various other instances and surfaces and, and, and they dominate you know uh, how these various questions that are asked various fields of uh, questions that are asked in, in, in physics uh, even today um, and um, and with that let me uh, let me conclude okay I wanted to also talk about the ADM formalism but probably it's uh, it's okay okay uh, but the point is that uh, that, so let me conclude, and, um, and, and I will take any questions if you, uh, if you want to. Yeah. So, so there are, I mean, we do not know completely non-equilibrium, but, but we can go away from equilibrium, make this time dependent. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is the notion of what is called the fluid gravity correspondence. It says that sometimes you can take these black holes and you can uh, you can perturb them, okay, and let them evolve, and you can actually see that you know the thermodynamics are actually modeled by fluid equations uh, in the boundary theory. Okay, so you can write down some boundary fluid equations uh, which uh, model exactly this this uh, you know what the gravity seems to tell us. Okay, uh, so yeah, so it's not completely equilibrium. Okay, one can one can do time dependent stuff also, and it all seems to hold out very well. There's there's, there's an enormous kind of checks in ADS safety, um, which which and, and also within string theory, the, this it is it's supposed to be a time dependent statement. It's not just of course that's just a clue, and and you, you know in this in this Maldison as example we talked about, um, all all things that we we have checked. Seem to say that it's a time-dependent statement that that you know whatever is happening in the bulk, there's a time evolution in the boundary theory, uh, with some global symmetry, which is for every gauge symmetry inside or, or roughly, okay, uh, which which seems to match in various uh, very very uh, non-trivial ways. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So for the gas in a box, that's basically 
It is not, but okay, there's a formula, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is proportional to the number of molecules, yes. Yes, but, but one can define entropy for anything. One can define an entropy for table. One can. Yes, yes, so that is, that is a question. Okay, uh, so this is a question we do not quite know the answer to, especially for the gravity that we see around us. But there are, there are examples, for example, there are examples where in string theory, where we do not know what the degrees of freedom are, where you can actually count exactly like you, for a gas. You can count and show that this entropy that, uh, that comes out uh, is exactly the entropy that, uh, that are there. This is one of the... We can do it in that also. See, there are thermodynamics we can do where the degrees of freedom are not known. Okay, uh, this is what famously you know uh, people did in ideal gases and so on. You know, people did not know about atoms. Okay, and hundred years before that, people were doing thermodynamics. Uh, that's how the, that's a, that's a grand thing about thermodynamics. And that's how you know like thermodynamics led us to discover quantum mechanics, uh, uh, as famously. Uh, so so a lot of mic without knowing microscopic degrees of freedom, you can do various thermodynamic uh, statements. And that's what uh, this thing. Sometimes you have a microscopic understanding, in which case you can you can try to check whether these microscopic statements that you're making are this thing. So that is partly what uh, what the Shubrov talk was about, which is about you know like um, uh, to see the world that we see around us, the microscopic world that we see around us, how it relates to the microscopic degrees of freedom. Sometimes you know how, sometimes you don't. Wald argued, it's a thermodynamic argument. Wald argued in general, in a gravitational theory, he basically started with these equations, okay, uh, and, uh, and did a Noether analysis of the Noether charges, and, and, and he tried to look at basically uh, D of, the, so, so you can calculate various Noether charges, like energy, momentum, and so on and so forth. You can calculate by the formulae that Noether gave us, uh, using that equation and the action, and, and if you calculate it, you know, you can, you can uh, you know, uh, isolate the entropy term using first law. Uh, that's what he did. And he realized that, you know, like when, you, when, you, when he, you know, extracted out a formula for the entropy uh, by, by using first law, really thermodynamics, nothing else, okay? He realized that, you know, like it also takes a form of a noether charge, okay? Uh, but for some, some symmetry, okay? And, uh, and, and that is the basic uh, insight due to world. So world, world realized that, you know, so, so it's not obvious, right? Because this is a noether charge, energy is a noether charge, number is a noether charge, okay? Uh, but but you, you feed various things in and you feel the, feed the values of temperature, chemical potential, and so on and so forth, okay? And try to get an expression for the entropy, okay? And what the world uh, said, the world noticed, was that it, you know, in every, all the dust settles, when this calculation gets over, okay, uh, the formula that you get also looks like you are calculating noether charge of something. Of course, we did, it, we did not start with that. We did not start with the symmetry and calculate the noether charge of it. Okay? We did it using first law and indirectly, but, but it, it seems to tell us that you know, it's a noether charge of something. Yeah, evidence, for that, it's evidence uh, I mean, it's just first law. First law is true. No, it's, it just depends on first law. So provided you know, like you're not violating first law of thermodynamics, which you cannot violate, that one, that equation. Yes, you know, in the gravitation, in the in the in the Einstein theory, of course, and with corrections, if you have corrections to the Einstein equations, yeah, with with exact coefficient and so on. It's, you know, area is not alone enough. The particular coefficient, there's some detailed uh, computation which which exactly matches. You know, that, that it, if you calculate the noether charge of the symmetry, yeah. Uh, for some ununderstood reason, uh, yeah. Okay, so 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 uh, since I am the before you start saying anything, let's <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. And now you can start your yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, so so since I am the last speaker, let me thank my co-organizers and uh, and also uh, our excellent staff who are behind it. You know, like uh, whom you don't see uh, as much as uh, you see us. 
but who are you know who are instrumental in doing this and and of course you know the, 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 our staff are uh, really great they have been holding the kind, the amount of programs that we throw at them is just uh, incredible uh, they they still do it okay and, um, and 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 any feedback or or whatsoever that you guys had had this about this program uh, please write to us and uh, and and it is important that uh, you write to us and and how this program was and so on and so forth uh, so that we can uh, for, for future ICTS activities. And, um, and, and so let me thank uh, everybody who was, was here and, and, um, and, and made this program a success. Thank you.